Okay. This is definitely a new topic. We got some credit for a new topic. Maybe this form is on here. It's always this humid in the summer, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ready for action? Yeah. Here we go. Morning, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to the share. This morning's share is on a new topic. I don't think we've touched this area. I'm not sure if it's Sharfman, so that's all. Never touch this area. We're talking about the title is the Briskarov's Kiddish. Tagenacht. Now, Brisk is a whole different realm <laughs> of Torah, Halacha. Let me first give a little introduction to the world of Brisk. Yiddish, day or night? Yes. Yes. Those of us who like right. Yiddish. I specifically use that subtitle in Yiddish to give a little bit of flavor for brisk. Brisk in the yeshiva world is an absolute dynasty. Kazal say, quote a chud hamishulish lo natik. If you have a family that for three generations has rabbanim, lo natik. That thread is not going to be cut so simply. And it's a very, very big deal to have a dynasty of that caliber. Unfortunately, in general in the Jewish world, through the ages, you have a lot of great, great people, but their children, grandchildren, descendants, didn't necessarily follow exactly in their path. Even if they followed in their path, but didn't necessarily achieve the same greatness as the previous generations or on par. And the idea of having a dynasty really going from pre-war Europe into post-war is really a big deal. And there aren't too many families that can trace their lineage like that in the Jewish world. The Brisk dynasty is, the Salvechiks, the Beis Alevi, or Yosef Dov Salvechik was the Rav of Brisk, followed by his, yes, his genius okay. son, Chaim Brisker, who revolutionized the whole Torah world. And his, one of his children, right, uh, the Briskarov, Revelvel Salvechik, had from him, he was the conduit, the bridge from Europe. Family moved to Eretz Israel, pre State of Israel, and we'll get to the moment. That Brisk. Revelvel, the Briskarov, reestablished the Brisk Yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael. And today, that Yeshiva, with all of its branches, has become the elite of the elite in the Torah world. Of course, also have Revelvel, the Briskarov's brother, of Moshe Salvechik, whose son uh, famously went to uh, YU and uh, there you have the Salvation from that side, and there's a Salvation family. <laughs> Sprinted off, one went to Switzerland, one went to Muncie. But the Salvation name is a major, major name for th- generations upon generations. So today we're going to focus on one person in that dynasty, the Briskarov, 
and his specific position about Kiddush. But before we get to that, it's not a halachic biography share, but just to give just a little bit of background. The Briskarov, Briskers in general, are known for their strong positions. For example, the Brisk, the Briskarov was against the state of Israel, against the government of Israel, so much so that the brisk yeshivas do not accept any money from the government. Now, most yeshivas don't take such a hardline position. They probably accept money from the government, but brisk never did, would say never will. And part of that was a very, very strong take against the government of Israel, which others, for example, of Shach, Ador, took a different position than most, you know, the majority of what you call Haredi Judaism participates in the elections. For sure, the Litvish world and even most of the Hasidic world participates in the elections and participate and work with the government. As opposed to the Briskers, they take a hardline position against it. Now, just to put in perspective, I happen to see a, a beautiful article. There's a rough Zvun Karla, the head of uh, YU's, uh, I believe, REITS program. And he was recently Nifter. His family is an old Yushami family. I believe his grandfather was Yitzhak Yaakov Moshe Karla, huge Yuv Tamachacha, Mokobol, Gon, living in Eretz Israel. And he took the hardline position, opposite extreme against the Briskarov. He was involved in, with the Nizrahi. He was a Talmud of Rav Kook. And obviously, that's a diametric position against. This Rav Kharla testified. He remembers as a kid, he went with his mother. And the Briskarov, I'm sure the context fully of the story, Briskarov was already old and sick. And he was like in a hospital bed. And whatever, they walked into the room. The Briskarov, with all of his strength, he was very weak. It from the hospital bed got up and with the notion, Ashes Chaver Kechaver. The wife of a Tamil Chacham deserves the respect of the Tamil Chacham. And he would stand up for this. Maybe he went with his mother or grandmother, got the nuances of the story. But this Rav Kharlap's family, here, this was diametrically opposed to the Briska Rav Shintas. But he had the respect to understand we could have halachic or hashkafic machlokas. Doesn't mean I don't respect your Torah, your stature, and you struggled. <clears throat> it was most of Nefesh to, uh, to stand up and give cover. In general, one other introduction you need to understand brisk is brisk in general the brisk rub in particular were very mockbit about certain types of chumras very mockbit and they would go to extremes to make sure that they keep the halacha with every dotted eye to the fullest and that really will be expressed we'll see in these positions they were not afraid take a position that nobody else would take. If there was a basis in halacha for their position, they would take that position and uh, stand stand through it. Really, it's the same way they would take a hashkaf position, regardless of the ramifications, they'll take halacha positions. Just to be different? No. If there is a if there is a clear halachic reason behind that chumrah, they would do it. <laughs> for example, this is very interesting. Uh, you know, there's a chumrah that's brought down the halacha of not eating anything outside of the sukkah. Definitely certain foods, definitely not to drink, right? It's brought down. There's yeah. the brisker rav would eat outside the sukkah. And someone just asked him, brisker rav, you're mocked about so many things. How do you not eat outside the sukkah? That's so he said with absolute clarity, if you go through the Gemara, it's absolutely clear that these things could be eaten outside the sukkah. That which brisk is machmer, 
we're machmer for for adas yochid for halachic opinion, a basis that says you should be machmer here. So we'll take one opinion versus twenty others, which take a different position. But here, this chumrah happens to be of the nature. There's no halachic original source for it. There's no Gemara that backs this up. It's a Chumrah that it was adopted over the ages. He says, yeah, that's not something we necessarily follow. He was, he was discerning, even in the Chumras, you have to know where it comes from. We don't just generally just take a position to be Machmer. There has to be a strong halachic basis for it. Now, that being said, I would like to introduce you to the Brisker of on Kiddush, day verse night. Before I get to the Brisker Rav's exact position, one more introduction. We have to talk about, in general, the difference between Kiddush by day and Kiddush at night. The Gemara in Pesachim, I didn't put this on the sheets, Kovav Manal says the following. Torah says, coming up in Parshish Kisisa, Zohar es Yom HaShabbos Right? We're supposed to keep Shabbos, we're supposed to mark Shabbos. The Gemara learns from here the concept of Kiddush. The Gemara says, okay, which Kiddush is this going on? Kiddush of night or Kiddush of day? The Gemara says it's going for sure in Kiddush of night. What's the purpose of Kiddush Friday night? What you're doing when you lift up your cup, you lift up your cup. Not that one. Not this one, right? Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this has a few reasons why we can't use this cup for Kiddush. Good point, Ed. But when you lift up this cup to do Kiddush, what you're doing is you're sanctifying, you're defining the difference between <coughs> Kodesh and Chol. You're defining this, this is Shabbos. That's it, making Kiddush. So the whole essence of Kiddush Friday night is to bring in the Shabbos, to, to mark the difference between Kodesh and Chol. Shabbos day Serena Shabbos. You marked your Shabbos last night. What's the point of that Kiddush? Or what exactly is that Kiddush? And the Gemara just gives a vague answer. My Mavarech, Bari Priyal Gafen. You make all the Gemara states is Bari Priyal Gafen. The Psukim that we say, Vesham of Nezos of Shabbos, Zacher Azim HaShabbos Akadsho, those are added on Psukim beyond the Gemara, post the Gemara. The Gemara just defines what's Kiddush Shabbos day, but we pre I'm going to come back to this, because I have a very interesting halakha nafkimina and brisk. But the nature of what exactly is Kiddush Shabbos day, so there are different opinions. There are some we show them, they all struggle with understanding. The Gemara calls it, they call it Kedusha Rabbah. But what exactly does it mean? The big Kiddush. Great Kiddush. The great Kiddush. Yeah. Right? There's Kishka this week. Right? There's Kishka this week. Good bottle of schnapps. So the first is we show them all struggle to really pin down what exactly that means. And we're going to talk about that. Now, Friday night, you're sitting there at your Shabbos table. You're making Kiddush. Does everybody at the table have to drink from your Shabbos cup? Does everyone have to have Wine, they would have to drink. The answer is no. There's an Indian for sure, people want to, could, should. But does everyone have to? The answer is no. Why? Kiddush Friday night, as we said, the purpose is to mark the today's Shabbos. How do you mark it? You mark it by saying Kiddush with wine. Okay, if one person says Kiddush, how does everyone else say? The answer is Shomei Kaona. By me listening to what he said, <clears throat> that's as if I said it. That's all you need. I'm gonna when I listen as if I said it. Look, the person making the kiddush will drink or will appoint another person to drink. Fine. But as long as kiddush is made, I hear that, I know it say I don't need to drink. What about kiddush Shabbos day? We'll see in a moment. Pashtas should have the same halacha. Comes along the briskarov, and the briskarov on Shabbos Day Kiddush will instruct all of his family members everybody must drink from the wine. 
He didn't say this Friday night. The brisker rav was more machmer Shabbos day than Friday night. Friday night, eh, you want to drink from the Kiddush, fine. Don't want to drink from the Kiddush, fine. Shabbos day, the briskers were machmer. The brisker rav insisted, you must drink from the wine. Have you ever been to a Suda where the host told you, Shabbos day, you must drink? Other than he wanted you to get the load. No. You must drink. That's what the brisker rav would instruct his family members and guests by his table. You must drink from the wine, Shabbos day. And he made kiddush. Obvious question. Yeah, he made kiddush from. Yeah. It must be from that toast. No. Yeah. So the obvious question is, what's the difference between Shabbos day and Friday night? What's the difference between Tag and Nacht? So, now this uh, idea of the Briska Rav, the Briska Rav never wrote this down. It's not in the Briska Rav's own <coughs> Sarim, but it's a mimer. I believe the earliest safer to quote it is Rav Sternbach, which I think they're from the Bidoli Post coming today, head of the Eda Charedas. So he brought this years and years ago in the safer, and I've seen many from since then deal with this issue of uh, but it's a famous mime where they say in brisk. The brisker Rav was uh, insistent that everyone drink Kiddush. Shabbos day. Why? So the brisker Rav, you know what? I'll tie it together too. With another brisker minute. Okay? I'm sure Different people here recite different parts when it comes to Kiddush Shabbos Day. There are some people here that will start from Mishamu, like we mentioned before. Here in Yeshiva, by Luban, I currently make Kiddush for the Yeshiva, but by Luban needs to do it before me. So Luban needs to start from Zacher. Okay, so out of deference to him, every time, I personally at home, I start from Mishamu, but uh, when I do it here in Yeshiva, so I do it where Luban did, so I say Zacher. <laughs> There are sometimes people, especially those who sneak away from the Kiddush Club, you know, after laning, you know, to try to be quick. Okay. People start from al Kane, so that's very important. Luckily, you should never start from al Kane. <laughs> what's, what's the words you say by al Kane? Just continue. Right? You, you say the Shem Hashem, but that's actually the middle of a Pasuk. Whoever invented al Kane. The guy running to you know to his kiddush club before you know the rough really calls amazing. him back. He you know he uh, he jumped. That's Al Kane is in the middle of a pasuk, and you're saying a pasuk with Hashem's name there. That's a bad idea. So definitely do not start from Al Kane. Start a little before that. So don't say any of it. Just go straight. The brisk the Sternbach says personally he starts some savri or another on the side. But here's what they did in Brisk. Shabbos day, everyone's gonna have to drink for the Kiddush, right, right? This is how they said Kiddush, Shabbos day in Brisk. That's it. No Vishamru, no Zachar, definitely not okay. No Savri, straight just Bar Briagafen. It's a hell of saying, that's great, it's the quickest Kiddush. Let's go Brisk. Bring on the Kugel. Why did the brisker Why did the brisker <laughs> Rav do that? <laughs> why did the brisker Rav only make Kiddush with Bar Briagafa? So here's the brisker Rav's take. All the Gemara mentions, as we said, is what? Just Bar Briagafa. So I have strict adherence to the Gemara. That's all the Gemara said. What's more than that? If all the Gemara said, that's what you say, Bar Briagafa. What's the nature of this Kiddush? The Brisker Rav understood. Shabbos, Friday night, their Kiddush is what we said, to mark the coming in of Shabbos, the difference between Kodesh and Chol. Kiddush Shabbos day, totally different thing. All that I'm doing with Kiddush, the Gemara says, is Barbara Guffin. So that means my Kiddush, my Barbara Guffin, 
is a simple Birchas Hananen. The same way you make a bracha on Tuesday, if you had a cup of wine, Margriadafen, in terms of what you're doing for Kiddush, it's the same thing. I'm just making a Margriadafen. And so that people don't get confused and think there's more to it. If you say Vishamaru, if you say Zachar, people might think there's more to it than just that. So I go, the Brisker Rav says, no, 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 we're going to keep exactly what the Gemara said. We're only going to make a bar in Priyadafen because Kiddush Shabbos day is just a pure Berchus Anen. That's the Takana the Chazal said, make Kiddush Shabbos day. All they're asking you to do is drink wine. One more step. If all they're asking me to do is drink wine, that's what Chazal asked me to do. They didn't ask me to mark Shabbos. They asked me to drink wine. So guess what? Everybody better drink wine. The brisker rubs understanding of the Gemara is all that the rabbis wanted us to do Shabbos day, Friday night, Storaisa, Zarkas Yom Shabbos Akacho. Shabbos day, all the rabbis want us to do is drink wine. From the book. So make a bar for yourself, and yes. And then everyone must drink this wine, this Kiddush. That's how the Briskarov calculated what he did. Yes. Or all the shows Why? around are brisk. And the rabbi, for you, make fish. You're not pulling out your wine to everybody in the yeshiva. So that's a very good question. I'm going to get back to that. But, first of all, brisk is its own small hamlet. For the most part, there's, you know, there are brisk, there are brisk yeshivas with 100 people in it. But, there are definitely not 1,000 people in it. Not 2,000. They do things small. And there are technical ways to do that. I could drink from this cup. I could pour into bigger cups and just keep on adding to it. There are ways to do that. It's not done. We'll get back to that. Most people aren't really brisk. <laughs> right? I, I feel bad. I turned it down. I never learned to brisk. Well, one summer's man, my family, we stayed in Gula. I don't know if you might remember this. We stayed in Gula. We happened to stay basically a couple blocks away from Brisk. From a dog itself, from, no, from Rabbi Yeshua, it's the Brisk. Right? <clears throat> the Brisk Yeshiva today is run by the Brisk Rub's grandson. The oldest son was Rabbi Salvechik, Yosef Dove, named after the grandfather, great grandfather. The Beis Halevi. He passed away relatively at a young age. His son, Avram Yeshua, took over. So Avram Yeshua has the most elite brisk, Rechov Pines, right off in Kula. So we stayed. Jerusalem. Yeah. So I remember I stayed there. And I caught, I believe it was Avram Yeshua. Is it his brother? Yeah. One of the, one of the salvation. So I was schmoozing with them, hawking with them. He invited me to join him for Shal Shalos. I felt bad because my I had my family there then at that point in Eretz Yisrael. I felt I couldn't leave my family to have a Shal Shalos. You know they were expecting me back. But I should have. I, I wouldn't be shocked. This is really this is from this Gemara too. Rabbeinu David over there in, in Shabbos in Sachem, where they're struggling to understand the nature of Kiddush Shabbos Day. Rabbeinu David in Zurishon goes on to a whole discussion about having wine, not just by Shabbos day meal, but also by Shal Shos. Yes. I don't know if you've ever seen that. People having wine specifically by Shal Shos. And part of that is it could be the same nature. Kiddush Shabbos day, Labdafka really is a Kiddush. It could just be a bar of So I can do the same thing by Shal Shos. Yes, you're actually, you had a point before? The, um, it's probably not an issue most of the year for briskers, washing before Kiddush, I would assume. But circus, a lot of people do it. 
just to avoid the back and forth. If a brisker would do that, then wouldn't that create a... Uh, yeah, so that's a big if. You're assuming if a brisker would wash before Kiddush. Well, only well, because there are people who it's legitimately totally unrelated to their minhug. For Sukkot, they just decide to play fast and loose with minhagim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, Are briskers no. less likely to do that, I guess? Correct. Yeah. Zero percent. <laughs> now, so we, we gave so far, quickly review, this background of how the brisker of came to this point that we're going to do Kiddush where everyone must drink. The brisker of understood the nature of Kiddush Shabbos Day is just what the Gemara said of Bar Dauphin. And it's not, don't confuse it with Friday night. It's not marking Shabbos. It's not supposed to be similar to what we do Friday night. Totally different beast. Friday night, Shabbos day, two totally different Kiddushes. So Friday night, the Briskarov didn't say everyone has to drink. The Shabbos day, the nature of Kiddush is just a Bir Hasanenin. It's just Bar Dauphin. And therefore the Briskarov will go out of his way to only say bar Briel Guffin with no additives. This is pure brisk. No Vishamru, no Zachar, not even Safri. If Sternbach said he personally tries to keep brisk and not get this, but he adds Safri. He felt that, that wouldn't take away. But the briskarov just said bar Briel Guffin, and since the nature of that mitzvah, according to the briskarov, is so that it's a bear for some It's supposed to have Hana. So the mitzvah is to have Hana, so everyone has to drink. Everyone has to have the Hana of that wine. Yes. So when am I going to say the mitzvah of Yai Shabbos Day? According when, to the Rav? When he makes Kiddush or when I drink the wine? When you drink the wine. Mm-hmm. So then, follow unrelated question. When you pass the coast, are you allowed to pass it to the next person because you're now passing up a mitzvah by not taking a drink right away? Yeah, yeah, good point. In general, we do say that. You know, and you're right. I think the first person to get the wine should drink. Same with the same with Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there's an idea like that, but you know, it gets trickier. You know, it depends what really is the mitzvah. Okay, but hold on a second. I want to jump. Now, this point for the briskarov is controversial. And there are many that challenge the position of the briskarov. Let me give you one example. Let's go through the Shulchan Aruch, Arachayim, Simon Rish, Ayin Gimel. Shulchan Aruch writes, Yochod makash lacherim avabisha ina ochalimayim. A person could make kiddush for someone else, even if he's not going to eat with them. He would do avi makam suda. Because for them, they're having a suda here. The alpha got the birkas of yain in yochalot yachir and the inan nenam imayim. Normally, if you're not going to drink something, so then I can't make a birkas and nenam for you. I can't make a bracha and you and you get. I can't make a bracha for the donut and you eat it. That doesn't work. If you're going to make a bracha on the donut, you better eat the donut. Okay. Even the high bar bria gafen who chovel the kiddush. Since that bar bria gafen is a requirement for kiddush. You could be mowed to them even though you're not getting on up. And the Ramah adds, If you have a Kiddush of Yom, the Shach is B'Shavetz, Mutter Lassos came. So the Shulchan Aruch, the Ramah is saying, I could be mowed to someone else with Kiddush, even if I am not going to drink. Why is that so? So the Chavetz Chaim explains clearly in the, in the Mishabur. This is what they mean to say. Even though Shabbos day, the whole Kiddush, all that the Gemara says, is just Bar Bria Gafen. Since it's a mitzvah, a mitzvah of Kishar mitzvahs. Look, Kiddush Hayom is a mitzvah like every other mitzvah. The Chavitz Chaim seems to explain the Mechaber. The nature of Kiddush <laughs> by day is it a Birchas or a Birchas Mitzvah? 
seems black and white in the Mishnah Bura. Pashas is against the Grizz. It's against the Briskarov. The nature of Kiddush Shabbos Day is a Birchas HaMitzvah. It's not a Birchas HaNen. And in the major Allah Kamina, I could be moti someone else with a Birchas HaMitzvah. You cannot be moti someone else with just a Birchas HaNen. It doesn't work. So this halacha seemingly is black and right, white against the briskarov. Now that would be very bad. If a, 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 the briskarov could have a chumra, the chumra can't be against another halacha. The briskarov is saying the nature of Kiddush Shabbos day is just perchas anenin. Here the halacha is stating I could be mozi someone else even though I'm not going to get a hanam. I'm just doing it to be mozi someone else. Why can he do that? Because it's a mitzvah. Birchus mitzvah, I can be moti another person. I can blow show for ten times. Is Why? Because birchus a mitzvah, I can be moti someone else. Is he saying the halacha is the kiddush is because of it's a mitzvah, or just that's there is kiddush on Shabbos morning and the etzim it's birchus and nenim because all it says is to have kiddush. No, and the chavetz chaim so, is giving. It sounds like he's saying it's a birchus a mitzvah. Yes. Isn't there more than just Kiddush Don't you have to have Mizomos or something else right after? That's for a different reason. Kiddush Mok Misuda. That That's part in order to be Yotze Kiddush. You also need to have Mizomos. That's true. And really that's its own and, discussion. And they hold from that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Be not. Right, right. But I can do the Kiddush and then... Right. Yeah. Now, another point. <clears throat> you look at the next Talacha where it spells out the Ferish. Doesn't need that everyone drinks the wine. It's okay if he drinks or one of the other people drink it. No one, not everyone has to drink from the wine. This halacha I found also, they said the same shame the Chazanish, on the Gedoli Ador of Dov Landau. It's not written by the Chazanish, but the Dov Landau recounts the Chazanish would say the same thing. People do not have to drink it. Why do people not have to drink it? Because it's Birchus mitzvah. They say it over here. Just like the Shulchan Aruch over here, Mishra Baruch explains it's Birchus mitzvah. so there's no need for everyone to drink. That's what Shmuel Kamenetsky Paskin, that's what Dov Landau said to Chazanish Paskin. Clearly all against the Brisker So most of us are not Briskers. What do you do with Havdol? <laughs> So it might be a different story. <laughs> Furthermore, if you look over here on the Ha'aros written on the Shmuel Kabetsky Sefer <clears throat> by Dabrasha Kleinerman, he brings the first of the Shem, the Grizz, the Kimah She'ikar Kiddush B'Shachris, Ha'im Mnei Kavod HaSuda, She'yishta Yayin Lufnei HaSuda Mnei Chashivaso, Lomasbik Lomo Yishta Kolatam Hem Yayin Lufnei Kiddush, Lovanti Heki Farsh Divrei Kori Shodim, Vator, Vashel Zanach Beklalam, Vitzarech Ian Gadol. They say, on top of everything else, it looks like the Gemara, the Rishonim, Shohar, the Postkim, all go against this Briskarov. Vitzarech Ian Gadol. Now, in terms of the Rishonim, I've seen people, you can find some Rishonim you can pin the Brisker Shita onto, perhaps. But I came across an amazing story. I looked up this tshuva from Rosh Sternbach. Listen to this story. Years ago, the Brisker Rav came up with this conclusion of what Kiddush is, and everyone has to go and drink. And he told over to his father, Reb Chaim, here's my Kiddush and Halacha. You know what his father said? You can't say something like that. It's against all the post No one no brings us down. Right. His father dismissed his cheddish. Chaim Brisker dismissed this cheddish of the Brisker Rav. The Brisker Rav says later he saw his father telling everyone they should drink like Yiddish. The curious world of Brisk. The son tells over to the father his cheddish. The father says, Nishpshat gets to get all the Rishonim. It's hard to say. 
Next thing you know, he's doing it. So the answer to this question also could defend the Briscoe Ralph. And I found that the in a couple of places they define the Briscoe Ralph like this. There's a Haggadah Shal Pesach from the, from the Brisker, in Beis Levi. they bring one like this, is that the Brisker Rav's whole, the Brisker Rav understood that Pasha Pshat and the Gemara is, it's a Berchus of Mitzvah. And there is room to say like that. And he wouldn't argue in the din of Yasa Motzei, that if you're ready with Yotze, you can Motzei someone else. But he was Choshed also for the Shita, for the chance that all it is is just a Berchus So the concept of telling everyone to drink, even the brisker rub in this door, that could explain Rukhai also, and also Khumra. Look, if it's just a Berchus this Gemara is very hard to understand. What is Kiddush Ayom? If it's just a Berchus then the safe way for us all to do it is for everyone to drink. But if it is, I can't definitively say it's a Berach Zanenet. It might be a Berach Mitzvah. On the side of the Berach Mitzvah, I could be moti someone else with that. This sounds quite tricky. Yeah, it sounds a little more like it's the other way. Right? Definitely it's very hard to Zanenet. keep. The fact that the Brisk Rub also was mocked with only the same bar of to me shows that he fully accepted those Berach Zanenet and didn't want to confuse it with, if it's a Berkos of Mitzvah, so then, yeah, it maybe is comparable to Kiddush by day. Maybe you should add Pesukim, Kiddush by night. So all in all, it's definitely not clear-cut, this brisker position. For the record, Harvey, what you brought up before, Sturmbrook said, look, in all the yeshivas, they're not mocked, but absolutely everybody drinks. You know, with yeshivas, you know, the mirror yeshiva has 9,000 bachrim. Mm-hmm. They make Kiddush Friday, okay. Shabbos, who says everyone's there for Kiddush Shabbos Day? They're eating out, you know, throughout uh, the neighborhood. Oh, but, 4, they, right, there's only 4,000. <laughs> but, the <laughs> mice, they're making Kiddush. Are they making, are they insisting that everybody drinks? No. Yeshiva's not makbal on this. And the general halakha position, Rabban will say, is you do not have to drink. But for those that want to know the brisker position, for those, look, you know, you're having a smaller suda. And you know you have wine. There, there is an Indian, at least the brisker rub held, that uh, everyone should drink on the tzad. That all this is is just a berachos on Well, thank you for coming with me on our journey today to brisk. Hope you enjoyed our journey. Bez Hashem. Next week we hope to be back, back in Florida, for a regular wonderful share. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. <laughs> May I ask this question? What was this then? Huh? The brisk rabbi, was he the rabbi who brisk the Yes. Yeah. Okay. He was. He started there, but then, then pre-47, he made it to Israel. Okay. Now, Menachem, during the war. Menachem Begin's father, mm-hmm. I believe, was a rabbi. Really? To the Bristol. Maybe his father.